An Introduction to Advanced Lake Ecology at Lackawack Sanctuary and Biological Field Station. This learning unit is a research and analysis on the effects of climate change at Lake Lackawack. Lackawack Sanctuary is a 510-acre environmental preserve near Lake Wallenpawpack in northeastern Pennsylvania. The sanctuary's mission is to provide a site for ecological research, environmental education, and preservation. Many college and university students and professors use Lackawack as a site for their research. 52-acre Lake Lackawack is described as the southernmost pristine glacial lake in North America. The unspoiled nature of the lake, along with its protected watershed, serves as a base study in water quality research for comparison to other lakes. Arthur, the aquatic resource for high frequency underwater research, is a floating data collection system pictured here that autonomously measures water quality through the depths of the lake and stores the data for later retrieval. Like other ecosystems, Lake ecosystems have an energy pyramid of trophic levels. Remember that the sun provides the input energy for the pyramid with the autotrophs or producers forming the base of the pyramid. In a lake, phytoplankton and aquatic plants form this producer layer. Zooplankton and other primary producers form the next level, feeding on the producers. The top of the pyramid consists of consumers that feed on the layers beneath. The system is pyramid shaped because the biomass at each level is decreased as the energy available from layer to layer decreases. The two major limiting nutrients in lake ecosystems are phosphates and nitrates. This means that as the levels of these two nutrients change, the productivity of the lake follows those levels. Lakes are classified according to their productivity. This is a result of limiting factor input within the lake ecosystem. Oligotrophic lakes have low nutrient concentrations, low biological growth, clear water, and dissolved oxygen throughout the water column. Eutrophic lakes have a high nutrient concentration and abundance of biological growth, especially algae and macrophytes. They have cloudy, turbid water, and a depletion of dissolved oxygen in the hypolimnion or the depths during the summer months. Mesotrophic lakes are somewhere in between. Eutrophication is the natural succession of a lake over time caused by increased levels of phosphate, nitrates, and sediments. The increased productivity of a lake because of phosphate and nitrate input can lead to the lake slowly filling in over time. Cultural eutrophication is the speeding up of the process caused by human input. Notice how natural eutrophication takes long periods of time, which cultural eutrophication happens much more quickly. Causes of culture, cultural eutrophication are sources that enhance the flow of phosphate, nitrate, and sediments into the lake. Point sources are clearly identifiable sources such as wastewater flow and industrial outflows, while non-point sources are much more ambiguous, but just as important contributing sources, such as agricultural activities and fertilizers. Scientists, including those at Lackawack Sanctuary, are learning that climate change contributes to eutrophication of lakes. Did you ever dive into a lake in the summer and notice that as you swim deeper down into the lake, it gets colder? Lakes like Lake Lackawack and other lakes in temperate climate zones stratify or layer by water temperature. Much like air, the density of water changes with temperature. Think about how hot air rises in a room or how a hot air balloon rises in the atmosphere. Water behaves in a similar manner, but with some exceptions. Because of the molecular structure of water, it is the most dense at 4 degrees Celsius or 39.2 Fahrenheit. This means that as water warms past 4 degrees Celsius, it becomes less dense and rises to the top of a lake. Water at 4 degrees Celsius is the most dense and sinks to the bottom. The unique property of water is that as water cools from 4 degrees Celsius 
to zero Celsius, it also becomes less dense, causing it to rise. So water cooler than four degrees Celsius also rises to the top. And of course, we all know that ice floats. The unique density changes of water based on temperature cause lakes and temperate zones to stratify or layer in the summer. Warm water caused by the sun and warm summer air is less dense and stays at the top of a lake and is known as the epilimnion. Limnion comes from the Latin word limnos for lake. The prefix epi means on top of. The bottom layer or hypolimnion remains cool. The metalimnion or thermocline middle layer is a layer of rapid temperature and density transition between the two layers. Because the density in the thermocline changes so rapidly, it acts as a barrier that prevents molecules and small particles from passing through. Since oxygen from the surface cannot pass through the thermocline, organisms such as plankton and fish that die and fall into the bottom decompose. That decomposition uses up the oxygen at the bottom of the lake, creating an anaerobic environment in the summer. If lakes were to stay permanently stratified, it would lead to the locking of valuable nutrients in the bottom of the lake in an anaerobic environment. Because the seasons change, the epilimnion begins to cool in the fall. Remember that cool water is more dense than warm water, so the cool water begins to sink toward the bottom of the lake. Eventually, the entire lake becomes the same temperature, resulting in a fall turnover that redistributes nutrients and oxygen important to life throughout the water. As winter nears, the top of the lake begins to freeze. Remember that ice is less dense than liquid water and floats on top. A winter stratification develops in the lake with the bottom being no warmer than 4 degrees Celsius. This layering develops a similar situation to summer with little oxygen on the bottom. Nutrients also gather at the bottom of the lake. Spring arrives and warms the lake, causing a spring turnover with the temperature being equal throughout the water, redistributing oxygen and nutrients before the summer stratification develops. Lackawack Sanctuary and Lake Lackawack are research centers for studying the effects of climate change on the ecology of our environment. Many of the studies are based on the concepts you just learned. Please feel free to visit us in person for a leisurely hike on one of our trails or a public program of interest. Learn more about our sanctuary at www.lackawack.org.